Before we tear into 1958, I want to expand on something from last episode. The fuel ban was anything but a knee-jerk reaction. You can go back 11 months before the ban. Drag News was doing an editorial encouraging pump gas only. They even did another one in later 56. After the fuel ban went into effect, recognize that a lot of tracks didn't abide by that. They still ran nitro. What confuses me is the NHRA 58 rule book doesn't have any classes in anything other than pump gasoline, yet many of their sanctioned tracks are still continuing to run fuel. A great example would be Pomona, California. In July of 58, they run an invitational race that allows nitro, except for once they go into eliminations, they stipulate either gasoline or alcohol, which is still considered a fuel. In January of 58, the ATAA is gonna announce their new helmet regulations based on the 1957 Snell Foundation tests. They are also going to outlaw all football and metal construction worker helmets. Very wise move. In 1958, we had the debut of the Sidewinder. It was a Hemi mounted behind the driver, sideways with a chain. The third driver of that car was Jack Crisman. There's gonna be three iterations of that car and they're gonna make a mark on drag racing. February 2nd, 1958. March Air Force Base, California, drag racing is gonna take a giant step towards international recognition. There have been long-standing records for the FIA standing kilometer two-way average. The Germans set them in their auto union cars back in 1937. We're gonna to try to take them away with two different dragsters. The first one is Calvin Rice. The current two-way average is 117 miles an hour. He's gonna bump that by six miles an hour to 123. Check one off for the drag racers. The next category, Class C, smaller cubic inches. Ed Cordoposse, nitro small block Chevy in the glass slipper. He is gonna bump the record up to 116 miles an hour two-way average, more than a 10 mile per hour improvement. In March, the NHRA and the ATAA join. Well, this is tie rod. This is NHRA's paper. But if you read Drag News and if you read Hot Rod Magazine, it suggests it's a merger. And my opinion is I think all three of those articles were written by the same person. I'm calling it a buyout or an acquisition. And the proof in that is after this takes place, you're never going to hear from the ATAA again, at least not in that form. The NHRA is now going to reference their nationals, at least for a two-month period. Their upcoming race at Oklahoma, they're going to call it the World Series of Drag Racing. Now, wait a minute. You just bought a company that put on the World Series of Drag Racing, and you're taking their name? Fortunately, soon, NHRA decides to call theirs the Big Go. In the May 1958 Hot Rod Magazine editorial, Wally Parks writes that he is upset about track operators trying to make an extra buck by selling pit passes to the general public. Man, am I glad you changed your opinion on that, Wally. At the 1958 Oklahoma City Nationals, NHRA says no stock cars. They're reserving the spots for the hot classes. It's the first 500 entries get to come and compete. And the winner is going to take the keys to a brand new 1958 Chevrolet pickup. Remember, Wally did not believe in prize money, but he did believe in prizes. Top eliminator is the fastest six classes. Those winners will run off for the bigger trophy. You get a class trophy, then run off for top eliminator. A dragster features 26 cars. Two of them are driven by Ted Sear. He's got a new lightweight supercharged Chrysler Hemi and he loses in the semis. He takes his trusty old unblown car with a big for sale sign on it all the way to the winner's circle. He's gonna take that truck. Sunday is top eliminator racing and Monday they're going to run speed records and for the door car classes. Hot Rod Magazine in November and an article in Drag News in their editorial are going to talk about that Oklahoma City race and they're going to say the course and facilities provided at Oklahoma City were in disappointingly poor condition. You think they're not setting themselves up for their next move to the fourth different venue for an NHRA national event? You'll have to stick with me on that. The AHRA nationals are still in great bend. That is a nitro race. Garlitz is gonna take the trophy at that one. Now I mentioned top eliminator is the fastest six classes that get to run off. Everybody down here can take their class trophy and then they're done for the day. Kingdon, California had come up with a new system called Little Eliminator. Let these guys run off for a bigger trophy at the end of the day. 
AHRA tweaked that a little bit, and at their nationals in 58, they also had a little top eliminator. I think it caught on because by 59, all the sanctioning bodies were now having runoffs for top eliminator, middle eliminator, and little eliminator. The ATAA World Series. Now, wait a minute. I just got done telling you guys there's no more ATAA. Well, that's the Automobile Timing Association of America. That one NHRA bought out. The new one is called the American Timing Activities Association, and they are still putting on the World Series of Drag Racing. That's still a nitro race, and for the second year in a row, Seto Postoian is gonna walk away with the trophy. That is the same guy who gave Don Garlitz the Swamp Rat nickname. Later in the year, the last national event is the International Timing Association race at Chester, South Carolina, and Seto is also going to win that race. Now, last episode, I misspoke and said he won it in 57. Actually, Garlitz had beat him in the final there. Earlier in 1958, NHRA's got a regional championship meet in Sebring. It gets rain delayed and postponed. Finals are going to be in Miami. The winner of Top Eliminator is going to get an all-expenses-paid trip to the NHRA Nationals in Oklahoma City. It is brother against brother. Ed's going to win that race. Don Garlitz is the runner-up. Ed gets a free entry with his gasoline-powered dragster to go to Oklahoma City on Labor Day. Don, who's nitro and can't go race that race anyway, heads over to Great Band and wins the AHRA Nationals. In May, at US 30 Dragway in Gary, Indiana, Chris... Kara Messinas is going to win in his street roadster, and 62 years later, that man is still tearing up the drag strip. Don Garlitz is named as the Southwest advisor for the NHRA. We're gonna see how long that lasts. Drag racing goes to Italy. Drag racing goes to Monterey, Mexico. Big year in 58. There is one lady licensed to drive a dragster. Her name is Lynn Sturmer. And September 28th at US 30, she is going to win Top Eliminator. In November, Lions Drag Strip in Long Beach is going to conduct a 3 16ths of a mile drag race. That's 990 feet, and that's 40 years before NHRA started running 1,000 foot drag races. Scotty Finn's chassis research cannot put out their production TE 440 chassis fast enough. You can buy them fully welded or you can buy them in kit form and weld them yourself. M&H Racemaster tires are now on the drag racing scene. The first purpose-built non-recaps for drag racing. They're going to enable us to go to different heights in performance very soon. In June, near Chicago, a railway car full of nitromethane explodes and that is going to seriously threaten the availability of that fuel for several months to come. In 1958, I counted no less than 16 times where the gasoline world record, either ET or mile per hour falls. It seemed like it was happening almost on a weekly basis. A lot of cars, but not all, were getting used to the added power of their superchargers. At the end of the year, the Nitro world record was 8.36 seconds at 180 mile per hour flat. Both ends of that were Don Garlitz, and that 180 represented a three and a half mile per hour increase from the previous year. By contrast, the gas dragsters had increased 18 and a half miles an hour in a one year period. The record holder at 9.10 at 166 miles an hour is the Glenn Ward driven Howard Johansson, Howard Cam special later to be known as the twin bear. Ironically, that 166 mile an hour speed that they set is almost exactly the same mile per hour that Emery Cook did on Nitro the year before that caused the entire fuel ban. So I have to give honorable mention to Art Arfons. Technically, he was the fastest gas pass in 1958 at nearly 169 miles an hour. The difference is his green monster had a Rolls-Royce World War II aircraft engine in it and just didn't seem to get the same amount of love as the automobile powered plants there. So here we are at the end of 1958. The type of fuel, nitro versus gas, is about seven tenths of a second, about 14 miles an hour. You've got front engine, rear engine, twin engine cars. You've got a sideways engine car. And if you think things are getting interesting, stick around for next year and stay tuned.